Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have another viewer request video. And this particular video, as well as some of the others we've done in the past, come from a student in Mongolia. And I must tell you that this problem is something that I've never seen before. And some of the other problems that we've been asked to do from this particular student in Mongolia, they're very unique types of problems. So let's take a look at this unique problem. It's an algebra problem. It deals with percentages. And notice that they tell us that there are between 411 and 599 students. They don't tell us the exact amount, they just give us a range. They do tell us that 12% of those students received an A, 25% of those students received a B, 35% of those students received a C, and 28% of the students received a D. And they want us to figure out how many of the students, however many there were between 411 and 599, that received an A. So the trick to this particular problem is to realize that whatever the number of students is that we have, when we take 12% of those, 25% of those, 35% of those, and 28% of those, all of those numbers must be a whole number, because you can't have a fraction of a student, you only have whole number students. Which means that, for example, when we multiply 0.12 times x, x being the total number of students we have, must equal a whole number. So, what does x need to be? Let's not worry about the range right now, but just what's the smallest number x can be where you end up with a whole number? And notice that if x was 100, for example, 100 times 0.12 is 12, that's a whole number. But can you have a smaller number than 100? The answer is yes, it could be 50, because notice, we multiply this times 50, that's 5 times 10. 5 times 0.02 gives us 0.1, but in other words, it moved the decimal place over 1. So in other words, if we take 0.12 and multiply times 50, we end up with a 6, which is a whole number. And notice that's the smallest x that we can have to get a whole number. For example, if we multiply 0.12 times 10, we get 1.2. Takes 0.12 and multiply times 20, we get 2.4. 0.12 times 30, we get 3.6. You can see the pattern. Eventually, you need a number big enough so that this decimal place turns into a zero. That happens when you multiply times 50, you end up 6.0. So the smallest number of students you can have is 50. You could have 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, and so forth. That satisfies the total number of students that could receive an A. How about 35%? What number do you need to multiply times 35% to get a whole number? So 0.35 times, well, let's see here, to get rid of the 5, you need a 2. 2 times 5, well, that gives you 10, but that doesn't get rid of the decimal place. So notice if I multiply times 2, that gives me 0.7. So what if I multiply times 4? So if I, oh, I'll go like this, 0.7, like this, makes it better. So how about 0.35 multiplied times 4? So that gives me, double that, that gives me 1.4. So the smallest number, how about times 10? 0.35 times 10, that gives me 3.5. And so I can see that 0.35 times 20, well, that gives me 7, which again is a whole number. So you can see that 0.12 must be multiplied by at least 50 or 100 or 150, but 0.35 must be multiplied times 20, or 40, or 60, or 80, or so forth. How about the next number? Uh, we have 28%. No. Oh, I forgot 25%. There we go. So how about 0.25 times x? Well, here you can see that if x is 4, 4 times a quarter gives us a whole number. So that's easy. So here we have 0.25 times 4 gives us 1. So the smallest number you need is 4, or 8, or 12, or 16, or so forth, and you end up with a whole number. And finally, 28. 0.28 multiplied times x gives me a whole number. Well, what does x need to be? Again, notice that if x was 5, 5 times 80, uh, 5 times 8 gives me 40, that moves the decimal place over, and then I need another 10 to move the decimal place over a second point, so we get 0.28 times 50, which gives us, well, let's see here, that's uh, 14, I believe, right? Yep, 14. So again, we end up with a whole number if we multiply by at least 50. So, now let's take a look. 
we must multiply by at least 50 for the 0 0.12, we need at least 20 for the 0.35, we need at least 4 for the 0.25, and we need at least 50 for the, uh, for the uh, 0.28. Why do you switch a 2, 20, or 40 around so the greatest Okay, that's probably a good idea. So we'll put the 4 there. So this is for the A, the B, the C, and the D, and so here we have 20. Okay. Now notice that 50 will not work because 4 doesn't go into 50 evenly and 20 doesn't go into 50 evenly. So if I multiply everything by 2, I mean evenly. Yeah, 20 does not go into 50 evenly. So why does it need to go in evenly? Because we're looking for the smallest common multiple of these numbers. So the smallest, the smallest common multiple multiple, like this, I'm miss, missing an L here, multiple like this, has to be a hundred. So if I multiply this times, well, let's go ahead. If I multiply this times 50, and 50 times 2, I get a hundred. Now all the other numbers fit into 100 evenly, and that's what I need. So my smallest common multiple is equal to 100. So if I have 100 students, or 200 students, or 300 students, in each case, I can take 12%, 25%, 35% or 28% and I come up with a whole number. That's the key. And so, I have 100 students or I can have 200 or 300 or 400 or 500 or 600 and the only number that fits between 411 and 599 is 500 students. Which means I had 500 students and if 12% of 500 students received an A, that is equal to 60 students that received an A in the class. And that's how it works. So essentially what you're doing is you don't know what the number is, but you look and see what, whole, what number I must multiply times each of the percentages, 12%, 25%, 35%, or 28%. I must multiply this one by 50 to get a whole number, this one by 20 to get a whole number, this one by 4 to get a whole number, and this one by 50 to get a whole number. And now I'm looking for the smallest common multiple of all these numbers, 50, 4, 20, and 50. If I take the biggest number and I multiply times 2 to get 100, the other three numbers fit evenly into this number. So this is the common multiple of the four numbers. And of course, it could be 100 or any multiple of 100, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, the only number that fits within the range is 500, so there are 500 students, and 12% of 500 gives me 60 students that receive the A. That's how it's done. Or you could just keep changing the multiple and see which one, and then add them all up. You could do trial and error, um, yeah. Um,